We're going to look at some more stocks now to analyze using the website app Stock Glasses. This video is partially in response to a comment left on the last analysis video on Revolve by Mr. Chocolate. Thank you for the subscription and I'm happy to hear that things are under control in Shanghai where you're at and you're doing well. So I've taken a list of these stocks that this person has recommended and punch them into the app. It generates a stock card for each one. Now what I want to do is actually filter these down to sort of narrow my choices so I can just pick maybe one to focus on. So now I only want to see companies that have a yellow rating. What that means is that if you hover over the question mark you'll see that the total assets are greater than debt, revenues are rising, cash flows are rising, and the 52 week price is relatively low. So that'll narrow down our list some, and I also only want to see companies that have a positive free cash flow for the most recent quarter. So that makes our list a little bit more manageable. Now all these companies look very interesting and would be great to investigate further. However, I've decided that I would really like to look at ELF. Since we looked at Revolve last time, which is a women's apparel company, this is sort of in the same boat. Not, it's not exactly the same, but it is a cosmetics company dealing with selling products uh, to women as well. So we're going to look at that, and basically right off the bat we can see that their current assets to debt is under one, but what we need to do is maybe look at their current assets compared to the current debt. That could not be a big deal. Um, the total assets to debt is 2.13, which is good. That means that they have two times total assets their debt. So if they really get into a bad position debt-wise or something unexpected happens, they have assets that they could sell and probably weather the storm to cover their obligations. Price, obviously, is beaten down very badly from the 52-week price range. So let's go into more details now and see what else uh, we can find about this company. Revenues generally increasing, looks very good. Net income is wavering, but generally on an upwards trend and all positive. Free cash flow from 2015 to 2018 is generally on an upwards trend, and it looks like they had a, a very good year in 2018. Um, so if we continue going down, these metrics here, this can just be used as sort of a starting point. Uh, the sector averages, you know, don't take these numbers as, um, you know, gospel. Basically, this is just a general uh, sort of thing you can look at to just give you a general idea of whether the numbers are maybe, uh, you know, lower, uh, if, the, if there's a good deal with the stock as far as its valuation. Uh, but it's just a starting point. Now, if we go down here, do their balance sheet, we can see that the current assets that they have are a lot, they're a lot more than the current debt. So they're fine there, that's not a problem. Uh, total assets again are about two times their total debt. So they're doing very good on the, on the balance sheet. Operating cash flow is good, CapEx is very low. Free cash flow as a result is great. That's the money that the owner can put in their pocket at the end of the day from the business. This is a very important thing because that's a big reason we're looking at business. How much cash can they generate and can we put in our pocket at the end of the day? So that's looking very good. Now what we can do, of course, is go to the company website, which I've done over here, and you can go to the investor relations section and find stock and financial and go to the SEC filings. I'm looking for the latest reports, so I use 2020 to filter them, and we see a 10Q here, which is a quarterly report. And the last video on Revolved, I looked at an annual report. So this time, we're going to shift gears a little bit and look at a quarterly report for the latest quarter, just to get an idea of how the company is doing very recently. Um, in addition, you'll also want to, of course, read the annual report. So you can check out the PDF, and of course... What I like to do is go down and find my favorite section, which is management's discussion and analysis of financial condition and results of operations. That will give you an overview of how things have been going and uh, what management has seen as risks or problems or uh, what has been going well and what their plan is moving forward. So I've read through that and I've taken some notes. So I am going to go to my notes here on Elf Beauty and sort of share my findings on the company. Now, this overall company, the company looks good, and um, I was uh, pretty impressed with everything I found. The main thing about this company that I like is that they are selling affordable, quality beauty, beauty products and cosmetics to... Uh, customers that are budget conscious and they sell them at very good prices. A lot of the products were under $10. Most of them were between $1 and $6. And they are reviewed very highly. Uh, the customers love the deal that they're getting. They're good products. 
they have sales in retail stores, Walmart, Target, these big stores that everyone shops at. They also have an international presence in the UK, Mexico, Germany, and Canada. And uh, they're expanding into skincare products, 100% vegan and cruelty free. The, the products are of uh, consistently a high quality. This, this is what I kept finding when I was uh, looking for reviews on them and hearing what customers had to say. So history, their vision was to create an inexpensive, high quality cosmetics line for women. They were in Los Angeles and saw all these uh, women with BMWs and Mercedes going into 99 cent stores. So they actually started off selling in places like Dollar Tree and uh, gained a following at the beginning uh, with budget conscious shoppers finding their products there. And because their products were good and of a quality and selling so cheaply, uh, their customer base just ramped up. They just they, they found customers that just wanted to keep shopping from them and loved what they were offering. They were getting a lot of bang for their buck. So that, I think, is their moat. What they're offering is quality products that are at very low prices. Uh, that is a winning formula in my book. Um, Warren Buffett tells a story about a woman, I think her name was Louis Blumkin. She was a Russian immigrant, uh, didn't even speak English when she came over to uh, the United States, and started a furniture company sort of with this mindset, keeping prices low and keeping the, the products uh, of a good quality. And uh, she wound up making one of the biggest furniture companies, one of the most successful furniture companies in the United States. Um, so this is a winning formula that I really like to see. And um, they have recently closed down their own retail stores in February of 2019. There were 22 stores. I'm not sure why they did that. I couldn't find a reasoning behind that. That might be something, something to investigate. But based on everything else I found, there must have been a good reason for it. And they seem to be doing just fine without those stores. And I don't anticipate this being a, a problem or a sign of uh, the company having some uh, business problems. So they must have had a reason which uh, we could probably investigate later on. Now their seasonality, they typically have uh, strong quarters from September to December and it's mainly due to holiday sales. That's when their sales ramp up. The other quarters we can expect a little lower performance and not be alarmed, that's normal. Um, their revenues are up 12% for the quarter in 2019 compared to the quarter ending December in 2018. Uh, this is good. Uh, this is their strong holiday quarter and they've done better this year than they did last year even. So that's pretty good. Uh, the gross profit and margin is 9% compared to the previous quarter in 2018. It's only a 3% increase uh, based on the nine month period, but it's due to tariffs. And this is something that is mentioned in the report that tariffs on Chinese products um, and, you know, the sort of trade war, as they call it, that's going on between the U.S. and China right now is affecting their gross margin. Um, this is, I nobody knows what's going to happen, but I would imagine eventually things there would have to be a compromise and things would have to be worked out between China and the United States and uh, the tariffs will probably come into under control. Uh, I don't know that for a fact, but uh, it is definitely something to keep in mind going forward. It is going to affect them uh, negatively. Now, uh, they are very conservative about dealing with debt. They do have a five-year, $250 million loan that is maturing in August of 2022, uh, and that includes a credit line of $50 million. Um, now, they have only drawn on $0.2 million of that credit line, so they are not burying themselves in debt. The company seems very conservative about managing their debt, and they are paying down their debt. Their interest uh, expenses have been decreasing uh, significantly um, from their past uh, quarters. So they are diligent about it, and it is uh, based on their balance sheet looking very good, too. They, they look like they're, they're, they're very financially responsible. So the risks now are the strong quarters are very dependent on holiday sales. If for some reason holiday sales uh, are not as high, uh, it's something to keep an eye out for. That could mean trouble for them, at least for that year. Now, this is probably a low long-term risk because, generally speaking, the holidays are going to be a time when people are going to spend more money. 
And uh, barring some situation where that prevents that, which who knows, maybe this year there may be a situation that prevents that with uh, the coronavirus thing happening. But uh, generally speaking, it's probably a low risk long term. Now, they are dependent on large retail customers right now for stocking their products, at least in physical locations. They also have online sales that they do through their website. So this is not, uh, uh, it's something to just be aware of. Um, I haven't read anything or seen anything that indicates they're going to have a problem with these retailers. Uh, what would be some of the risks we could think about that could change that relationship? Uh, maybe these retailers could come up with their own fashion brand, their own budget brand, and sell cosmetic cosmetics that would compete with ELF. That doesn't seem to be happening. It hasn't happened uh, um, uh, so far, at least I don't know of any brands that they sell that are competing with ELF and uh, hurting their business. ELF has such a loyal customer base and people love them so much that it would be very difficult to overthrow them in a budget uh, cosmetics uh, category in these stores. Um, that is, again, I think that is, is one of their uh, one of the things that differentiates them and is part of their moat, as, um, as it's called. So that is probably not a uh, big risk at this point, just something to keep in mind. Um, now, they are continuously raising prices. Uh, they're gradually raising prices uh, over the years, and customers are still okay with that, as we'll see when we start to look at customer responses to the product. Um, however, the question is, is how long can they continue to rise these prices? When is the breaking point? We don't know. That is something to think about and decide and say, when does it look like customers are going to start looking at other budget cosmetics providers? Um, now, one thing that they do have going for them is that they are selling quality products. So at least in the near term and for the foreseeable future, I don't see this as being a terrible risk and customers are still very happy with the prices that they're charging and very happy with their products. So now, things that are sort of going well for them are tailwinds that uh, give them an advantage. Um, the uh, tariffs, when or if they get lowered and things calm down with that, um, that, will, that will help their profits and margins. So that's something to keep an eye out for. Uh, when the company is paying down their debt, which they are doing, um, they are accruing interest on cash and cash equivalents as well at the same time. Interest payments have decreased 21% for the three months ending December uh, because they are diligently paying off their debt. So that they're well on their way to uh, taking care of that. Um, the, the best thing that I've found about this company is that their customers absolutely love, love their products and Consistently, when I was looking up reviews of their products on YouTube, uh, I read and heard nothing but good things. They were talking about the quality of the product, the great price that they get for, for a product of that quality. This is in contrast to sort of what we saw with Revolve, where a lot of the customer response was, this product is actually not of that high quality to be charging these prices for. Um, so it was really impressive to see the consistently good reviews of the products and how happy the customers were uh, with the company and what they were offering. Also, they have a, uh, a huge following. Uh, their, their, their YouTube channel has 99K subscribers. Now, the Revolve channel, if you look at that, that has about 8K subscribers, and they're extremely good at marketing, as we saw in the last analysis of them. So uh, they have that going for them big time. Um, the, um, between their balance sheet, their growth of cash flows, their very loyal following, uh, this company is looking very good, and um, uh, I'm definitely going to keep an eye on them from now on. Uh, so, uh, Mr. Chocolate, thank you for the recommendation, and um, I'm going to continue looking at this one and, uh, of course, some of the other ones that uh, you recommended as well. If anyone else has recommendations or would like to see a video like this for a stock they're interested in, put something in the comments, and uh, we'll see if we can uh, look at it and do the same thing with it. 
Thanks for watching. Hope you've enjoyed this and uh, see you in the next video.